Hey everyone, this video is about new RPL, which is a reimagining of HP's RPL programming environment. And I'm going to show new RPL version 1360 on an HP 50G, but it's also possible to run new RPL on a 39GS or a 40GS. And there's also a new RPL Android app uh, and a PC version. Uh, there's also a port for the Generation 1 HP Prime in development. So new RPL came out of the HP GCC3 project that allows cross-compiling of binaries to HP's ARM calculator CPU. And the motivation was to preserve the language by making it accessible on modern platforms. So installing new RPL on an HP 50G calculator completely removes the old operating system and transforms the calculator into a new RPL device. A new RPL aims to provide a number of advantages over the HP firmware. Um, one advantage is performance, so it can run at one to two orders of magnitude uh, faster. Second advantage is support for more versatile numbers. Uh, and there's many things to cover here, but a headline feature is that it supports numeric precisions of up to 2,000 digits. And a third advantage is around the UI changes from the stock experience. But of course, the advantages of new RPL come with downsides too. So it's still beta software. And although uh, it does add uh, new functionality, you'll be giving up a large number of features from the stock 50G experience. In particular, it doesn't have an equation editor, a fully featured algebra system, uh, or many of the built-in apps of the 50G. Uh, but new RPL does endeavor to be compatible with user RPL. And for RPL programmers, uh, this is where the real major advantage lies. New RPL is straightforward to install via a SD card or USB link uh, to a PC. But both of these methods have a few prerequisites that require paying attention to. Uh, so the 50G only supports SD cards up to 2 gigabytes that are FAT formatted. And the USB method requires particular configuration of your PC if you're using Windows 10. And I'll include a couple of links in the descriptions uh, that go into the details. And so booting up new RPL, you immediately notice a slightly different user interface from a stock 50G. The top portion of the display is still the stack area, uh, followed by a top row of soft menus that spans the width of the display. Uh, but underneath uh, are a few new features. So on the left is a new independent uh, second set of soft menus that occupies two lines. Uh, and so you can use one menu as a function menu and another for variables or configure them to your liking. Uh, and on the right of the second menu is an uh, indicator row and below that a row for auto completions. And to match this experience, new RPL will remaps many key functions on the keyboard. So like with the stock experience, the top row of the keyboard defines software keys for the top menu. And new RPL defines its own top level menu structure with functions organized into categories. And then the second uh, lower block of six keys uh, now control uh, the second tier menu. And so the functions that were accessible through these six keys on the 50G are either no longer available or have been remapped. So in particular, the store and recall key has been remapped to history in new RPL. And the functions of the arrow keys change too. Uh, so the left arrow allows up to uh, eight levels of uh, undo. And you can hit uh, redshift and uh, left arrow to redo. Um, I've got right arrow uh, map to swap X and Y uh, and you can use the up and down keys uh, to scroll up and down through the stack. And it would be possible to put stickers on your 50G keyboard for these mappings but I've found you can pretty quickly get used to these changes. Another interesting experience change is around the command line. Uh, so if I start typing uh, you'll notice a flashing cursor with a letter in it. Uh, and new RPL supports different modal input states that have uh, different letters associated with them. Uh, so there's uh, direct mode, uh, algebraic mode, programming mode, and uh, capital and lowercase alphanumeric modes. 
New RPO does support upper and lower case levers, uh, and these can be toggled uh, through via the alpha key. The new RPO gives the user a lot of control about how numbers are stored and presented. For example, to display numbers with 20 decimal places, I can recall a format string uh, from my second level menu, uh, and then I'll run the set in format command. And you'll notice that as soon as I start typing a letter, uh, I will get um, an autocomplete function uh, available. Uh, so I'll keep typing. And to uh, insert the autocompleted result, uh, I hold alpha and right arrow. And a unique feature of new RPL is that it distinguishes explicitly between numeric approximation and exact values. Uh, so for example, uh, 1 divided by 3 uh, displays a dot at the ends of the 20 digits, and that dot indicates that it's an approximation. Uh, but if I divide uh, 1 by 2, I get 0 0.5 without a dot. Uh, that indicates it's an exact value. And the precision for approximate numbers is also used as a selectable parameter using set precision. And so the default is 30 digits of precision. Uh, but it does go up to 2000, uh, so we can run that now, uh, and then run the set precision command. And uh, now I can uh, get pi by uh, calculating the arc cos of uh, 0 and multiplying that by 2. And that's calculated to 2,000 digits, but it's not possible to display all those digits, obviously, on one line of the display. Uh, another nice example is, uh, say we can run uh, factorial 100. And that's quite a large number. And so high precision is a really nice feature of new RPL. Although I guess most people would never uh, need 2,000 digits of precision, it's nice to know that it's there. And it's considerably more than, say, the WP34 or DM42 uh, that support 32 digits. And to enter numbers and other bases, uh, you can prepend them by the hash symbol uh, and uh, follow it by uh, the base. And you can use uh, right shift 3 uh, to cycle uh, through the bases. There's also a base menu. Uh, arithmetic can be done on numbers in uh, different bases, and the result is displayed as the base of the first argument. A new RPL supports uh, binary word sizes and bitwise operations such as AND and OR. And like the stock experience, uh, complex numbers are entered uh, between parentheses. Uh, so I can type in uh, uh, I and uh, if I square that, I'll get negative 1. Lists are also entered uh, in square brackets. Programming new RPL works in a similar way as on the stock experience. So to recall a program from a variable in the soft menu onto the stack, I can hit the right shift key and then the soft menu key. And now to edit that program, I can hit alpha and down arrow. And uh, RPL programs are defined within Gilamet characters. Uh, and this program is a solution to the N Queens problem. Uh, and it's often used to benchmark calculator performance. And new RPL has an advanced program editor with copy and paste and a number of other useful features. Uh, but I can hit enter now to return to the command line. Uh, and to run that program, uh, I can just uh, hit the soft key. And uh, it runs in around 100 milliseconds, which is about 200 times faster than on the stock firmware. And there are a number of reasons for this. One is that new RPL compiles programs directly uh, for the ARM CPU, whereas RPL programs in the HP firmware get compiled to the Saturn architecture and then run through a Saturn emulator. A new RPL also supports very fast access to local variables uh, and list operations. And so if you're an RPL programmer, you'll really see some dramatic performance differences. And I'll drop a link in the description to discussions around in Queen solutions on the 50G. 
And so in summary, new RPL is a really remarkable project, and even more so since it seems to be driven by one main developer, uh, Claudio L. Uh, but I also see commits by Stefan Akitz also. Uh, the code architecture is divided into three layers. There's a RPL language core, a hardware abstraction layer, and hardware interfaces for various platforms. And it'd be really interesting uh, to see the port for the Gen 1 HP Prime when it becomes available. I think whether you would use new RPL over the stock experience on your 50G would depend on your own needs. But there's certainly a lot of advantages to talk to. Uh, and if you want to quickly try out new RPL for yourself, uh, the Android app is also quite usable. And I should say there are many features of new RPL I haven't mentioned. Uh, it has more advanced SD card support, an assembly like instruction set, and a lot more keyboard shortcuts than I could uh, show in a quick video review. And I love the level of experimentation uh, new RPL shows and the support it has in the community. And I think at long term it will help the RPL language uh, and environment to be preserved. And for me and I think many others that's a really wonderful aim. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful.